All right, welcome back. Um, like we we'll naturally do, we'll take a, give you an update of what the situation um, is like across a few of uh, our states. Talking about COVID-19, the figures are not looking good. 11,166, that's what the numbers are saying at the moment. So we're going to be speaking to our, our correspondent from Plata State, uh, uh, Damawa State, and most likely Kano, Kano State. Uh, we have um, Samson Omale in Joe. So Samson, good morning. A very good morning to you, David. Good to see you. Yeah, good to see you. I, I kind of like your jacket, though. <laughs> Thank you very much for the compliment. All right, so Samson, uh, tell us exactly what is happening in in Plata State. Your your figures are 109 uh, at the moment. 109. That's what the figures are like. Uh, just tell us exactly what the situation is like. What uh, the feeling is like in Kano, looking at I mean in Plata, looking at COVID-19. All right, as you rightly said, uh, we've not um, confirmed this is 109 as of today. Five people are currently on admission. We have over 69 people discharged and two reported deaths so far on the part um, As we stand today, um, we just this morning, we're getting back to some bit of um, life after the lockdown that started at the United Monday, the situation in the last five weeks. So midnight every Sunday, we're going to this total lockdown. And then by, you know, midnight Wednesday, we're expected to come out and be spoke, as the governor often say, and of course go ahead with some other transactions in this season. But what we notice over time is that uh, in the course of this lockdown, the best people are becoming a little bit wary, they are becoming tired. And they are hoping that the government will stick with a few of them in the course of the week. Um, they think that uh, we are emphasizing something else in terms of to contain and uh, contain the spread of the virus. One of the solutions they're giving is hey, look, make the wearing of face mask compulsory, make um, sanitation in terms of hand washing, using um, the use of sanitizers a little bit more uh, deliberate. And then open up the economy a little bit because accidents and those who live in Delhi are becoming really very concerned as they are finding it very difficult to deal with. So, as I speak to you, the traffic is back to the streets. Uh, people are heading to the banks to do the transactions they're not able to do. And those shops that are supposed to close and open it up uh, this morning. And then, uh, yeah, yeah, life appears to be getting back. Uh, again, as I said earlier, this is what we've experienced the last five weeks. We're hoping at the end of this, the state government, uh, the right honorable Simon Bakula, will be able to come up with some bit of review. Because again, people have argued that despite the law, the numbers are fine. To normal. I want to know if uh, religious activities are ongoing and if interstate travels are also ongoing. Um, I can confirm to you that religious activities, yeah. no worship center, uh, it's has been the last couple of uh, weeks. What we have is that because the relaxation of the two lockdowns also within uh, worship is a two major religion, Friday and Sunday. What happens is that the government has limited the number of people who will be in, that, um, in those worship centers just to feel. And then I both be free to break the law and you can be arrested uh, and prosecuted on the face of the courts and all of that. So, what we've seen in the last five, five weeks now is that um, the churches only can accommodate just about 50 people, still also with a mask around the state. And in terms of interstate travel, uh, during the period of the total lockdown, that is night Sunday to Wednesday, I confirm to you that very little interstate travel happened. But once that is done, like today, I can tell you that the most parts will be open up. You show what happens in the Because again, I'm possible that the you know, the, the, the state seems to be almost um, reopened, uh, given by um, all you talked about. Uh, one begins to wonder how the people 
are buying into the measures that have been put in place to ensure uh, 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 curbing the spread of the virus. Do you see uh, anything close to total compliance? Uh, we're talk, keep talking about the wearing of face masks. We talk about the use of um, hand sanitizers, hand washing frequently, uh, uh, social distancing. Do you see all of that really, really coming into play in Plata State? Not, not, not at all. Um, in terms of we say high compliance when it comes to the use of face masks, um, that is most people um, use a face mask uh, as yeah, In terms of hand washing and uh, the use of that is fair. But I can tell you that when it comes to physical distancing, it's almost non existent uh, because. Uh, I mean, you, you, I, if I had a change of speed pictures, if I go out this morning, the worst thing that I've had to put a cluster together, I mean, the markets can be open and uh, no uh, smart fact business as usual. Uh, you get to the taxi, the buses where the city government had given certain requirements and that kind of having a number of people to board a particular taxi or bus. Or that is not available, or even the price same is the issue. So when it comes to social distancing or social distancing as the case be, that is almost existence here. Oh. All right, Samson. We'll talk to you in just a moment. Let's um, join a journalist in Kano, Gonbo Saraki, uh, who is ready to give us some updates from that access. Good morning, good morning. Gambo. Yeah, good morning to you from Kano State. Uh, good morning from Lagos State. Uh, good that we are on the same time zone. Anyway, uh, bring us up to speed with the COVID-19 situation report in Kano State. Okay. Yeah. In, in Kano State, um, the COVID-19 pandemic, you know, brought up so many things, you know, since last week. Yeah. At the beginning of last week, it was a very serious thing for Kano State people because the information managers ran into crisis beginning with the isolation center video that came up. You know, somebody went to Tanya Abata Isolation Center that ought to have taken 600 beds, you know. Somebody made a video of the place to show that that isolation center was not even ready and people were not in it. However, the general story outside there before then was that the place was housing about 600 people from, you know, the hundreds of... Um, isolation, I mean, COVID-19 patients that year in Kano. So the government was not happy at all about that video. So they came outside to say, okay, the video was in error and that the isolation center was not in force, was not in use because experts advised against it that isolation center should not be in the middle of the, of the, of the city. Another, other government officials also came up to say that, okay, the isolation center was not in use because the Dangote Foundation that donated it to the state government, you know, had not submitted it, handed it over yet to the state government. So they had conflicting, you know, I mean, reports from coming from the government trying to defend their stance on why the isolation center was... Before that school, you know, move forward at all, Issa Abubakar, a professor of um, infectious disease from Bayero University, came up to counter what the governor said, because the governor was celebrating that um, fewer numbers of um, COVID-19 patients were coming up in Kano State. So the professor countered it by saying that the fewer numbers being recorded in Kano lately isn't a matter to be celebrated because fewer tests are being carried out also, you know. However, Issa Abubakar, a member of the COVID-19 Task Force in Kano State, has also been made to, to retract that statement, just like uh, we saw the, the statement of Dr. Bozo, a member of the presidential task force that came to Kano earlier, was made to retract the statement that said that um, COVID-19 was responsible for the mysterious death. So, as it is in Kano, anyone that says anything, that contradicts the position of Gandhi, Gandhi J is made to retract whatever he or she is in. Now, after Mr. Abubakar made that statement, uh, the chairman of the COVID-19 state, I mean, in Kano State, Tijani Hassan, came up to say, okay, 
1,018 tests were taken between 24th of June to 30th of June, 24th of May to 30th of May 2020. You know, to trying to tell us that sufficient tests are being carried out in Kanu daily. And after that statement of Peter Abubakar, which he was made to return, the government has now decided to start telling us the number of tests being carried out. Well, till date, the government has said that 4,818 tests have been carried out so far in Kanu State. And that, you know, the confirmed cases are now 170, while the active ones are 639, and the discharge case is being 286. After recording 45 deaths since the first death case was announced on um, April 11 in Kanu State. So the people, the government of Kanu State has been finding it very, very difficult to manage information right from the onset of this COVID-19 situation. Now, when the presidential tax was announced that um, there, there will be relaxation of the of the lockdown in Kanu State, people were jubilating. Everyone were people were happy. The police people left G the Gambo, the Gambo, you Gambo, know. So before, back before on you the go into that, you know, moving around. Yeah, hello, the Gambo. Came up with Gambo a before you go into into that, I want, that, I want, I want, I want some clarity. Uh, when you say that uh, the Kano state government has not been able to manage information, uh, let's look at the word manage. Are you saying manage or are, are there suggestions that they are not telling the actual truth? Then, well, if when we talk about manage of information in this aspect, they are economical with the truth. They do not tell you what you want to know as a journalist. When you come in contact with them either in a briefing or in a, you know or in a discussion forum they will not tell you anything. But when there is um, an evidence of what is going on here and there, just like the video I came up from one of the isolation centers, showing that the isolation center was not in use, they will come up to defend. So instead of being proactive, they are being defensive. They, they try to defend what has been said. They do not come up to tell us the position of things. That is how it has been from day one. In fact, within the first, you know, three weeks of um, COVID-19 issues in Kano State, journalists were crying because they knew they did not say. No one knows what was happening in Kano State. They do not tell you anything. The whole thing is just being done secretly with image. But when an allegation comes up, then they come up to defend. They are being defensive. The, the information managers here have really shown that they, 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 they were not, you know, prepared to manage the risk information. You know, that's what it has shown to us here in Kanu State. They tried to defend that the isolation center was not in use for some reason. However, before then, they told us that the isolation center was in use. They even made a very good video, you know, using drones, you know, or all around Kenya about that stadium, they made a video of that center. They used drone to show right. how wonderful it is, Gamble. how nice it is, and it's helping many people. Only to come out later to tell us why it was not being used after a video came up to say, okay, well, this place is empty. All right, and Gamble, the earlier, to the economic Gamble, earlier you yeah. said that um, when the governor relaxed the curfew or the lockdown, that people were jubilating. Yeah. Uh, we know that. Yeah. Um, the Kano State Governor granted the reopening of all Kano markets on three relaxed lockdown days of um, Wednesdays, Fridays and Sunday. In, addi in addition to the adjustment of timing um, of curfew from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, we also know that the Governor summoned a meeting with the market leaders on the need to ensure strict compliance to the laid down protocols in safety. I want to know what is the idea of the Governor in uh, uh, having the strict, you know, strict rules or guidelines for the social distance, and what are the plans of the governor, if you have an idea? Yes, of course I do have an idea. Now, what happened is that when the chairman of the presidential press made announcement last Monday that, okay, um, the lockdown will be relaxed all over the country, we were expecting that can also be put suit. Because two weeks ago, when he said that Kano should be under social lockdown, that didn't open the top sheet and the mosque for prayers. 
Now he came up two weeks later to tell you, let there be peace all over the nation. We were expecting that Gandhi will rejoice with everyone. But later on, about five to six hours later, Gandhi decided to say, no, we are keeping to our Sunday, Wednesday, and Friday opening, while other days remain under law and key. The only difference, the different thing that the MDG has done so far was to say, okay, market can open across the state. So people are sad again. They are not happy with them. They believe they are locking down the state and allowing only three days opening just like before. You know, it, it's not, it doesn't make sense at all because no one is maintaining social distance. We needed to have come to tiny market yesterday. Everywhere was jam-packed. No social distance. All the discussion he had with the market leader at the state government house was just I mean, something just for the camera, you know, just let people see that I'm discussing with the market leaders. But I can assure you, none of those protocols were observed. I went to the Sabon Gary market, which is um, Abu Bakr Rimi market, you know, at the Sabon Gary area of Spanish State yesterday. No social distance, the issue of applying sanitizer, restriction of gathering. Well, of course, you do not have the manpower to, to monitor the market. So definitely, all those rules will not be obeyed. The only difference between what is happening now and what happened last two years is to open. Today, the internet is under another lockdown. I spoke with the drivers across the state yesterday. When I spoke with them, they said that they have not seen sense or understanding wisdom in what Gandhi is doing when it comes to management of the COVID situation. And let us forget, there was a major thing that happened last week. Gandhi was very that The federal government gave Gandhi 5 billion, but refused from Gandhi 5 billion out of the 15 billion era he was asking for. But he was told that he could only get 5 million at a time. That Gandhi can only access 5 million at a time through the NTDC intelligence here. I mean, he will need to tell, give account of what he wants to buy and what needs to be done. And then the NTDC will get it for him, yeah. $6 million at a time. Yeah. Because after this $5 billion issue came up, that the numbers of COVID-19 patients began to drop in Kanu State. So, so, Gambo, Gambo, yes. uh, looking at yes. all that you have reeled out so far that is happening in Kanu, yes. Do we still have this fear of an unfolding catastrophe, uh, talking about COVID-19? Do we still have that fear, or, or, or it has been downpulled largely? Well, having observed that um, the ma no one is observing uh, social distancing, having observed that the health code calls are not being followed, having observed that the church is open, having observed that the Juma mosques are open, Juma prayers going on peacefully, and then the each prayer we are held, that's the Salah prayer now, we are held, of course, without social distances as expected. Yet, the numbers of COVID-19 patients in Kanu keep dropping, according to Kanu State Health Ministry. You know, with all these indices put in place, people have not believed that, okay, the work is over in Kanu State. That's the belief now. Because as much as management of information, you know, remains, the information managers in China remain economical with the states. Remember, till date, no one has told us the actual medical, you know, reason for the mysterious death today. So they are waiting for the, for the whole season of COVID-19 to move away and everyone will forget about it. So that's just an example of how information is being kept away from journalists and others in the state. So the fear of a major breakout of COVID-19 in Kano state is over because um, a lot of things are, has happened and uh, no one, you know, the number of COVID-19 keeps dropping. But as with the latest uh, COVID-19 report, no case from Kano over just yesterday. So we believe that the work is over in Kano State for now. Yes. All right, Gambo, we'll, we'll talk to you again if time permits. Let's go back to uh, uh, Samson O'Malley in Plateau State. Samson, if you heard the closing remark of um, Gambo, he said uh, the fear is down. The worst seems to be over in Kano State. But we've heard from the NCDC and some other st major stakeholders, health professionals, saying that Nigeria may record more coronavirus cases. We know we've only tested uh, very few people. In fact, 
The latest numbers of those who have contracted the virus are less than 12,000 Nigerians. And considering the fact that we don't have enough tests going on on a daily basis, uh, do you think Kano uh, and Plateau State perhaps has, um, is not um, doing badly in terms of the awareness and the rate of coronavirus spread in the states? Uh, excuse me. Uh, the average, if you ask most people, based on our interactions and all of that, uh, they are aware that there's a presence. You know that the virus, if you don't take cautionary measures, you can contract. And as a matter of fact, one of the things that uh, the, 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 the stigmas have begun to emphasize is to avoid systematization. So, when you get to a point where people can stick time to contact the virus, it tells you that people are actually aware that the um, virus is, is, is here and it's um, is, is affecting people, or rather that people are getting infected, uh, people are dying from it. Even though, like here, we've had less cases because we're not testing much, uh, because if you look at the number of deaths of the state um, compared to what you have in all the states, then, of course, you have the number of people who are at the moment just continue too. So you also begin to ask yourself, what are we, are we really uh, doing? And that's why we're trying to, as much as possible, keep the number as well. But again, if you speak to all the people, they can go by 100 cases, there's a huge number. Uh, whatever needs to be done, to think that should be done. So, um, Zika, to answer your question, yes. I don't think the state is doing too bad in terms of awareness, of getting people to uh, be careful and to also ensure that they are avoid contacting the. You know, Samson, sometime in, in May, yeah, sometime in May, the state government set up a team uh, to search for local solutions to uh, COVID 19. Uh, what exactly are you hearing from the team? Um, at the inauguration of that committee by the state governor, which is headed by uh, Professor Chio Monan, uh, who is from the pharmaceutical department, right, focus of the department that did his job, again, they've gone into the started work. Um, they are getting more of uh, proposals, um, but not gotten any show yet. And for people who have um, come up with some bit of your one thing I can mention, I can mention very is that back to that, I mean, one of the leading research for the um, for the drug or for the plant at Nithia uh, is from Plato. Not, I mean, not not, not like but but the end. It is the investor of jobs where a whole lot of work has been done. And I, which we hear can also um, have a significant role in dealing with the corona. So um, I can harness all of this. Uh, and of course, we have the National Veterinary uh, Institute, the MBRI, the foremost veterinary uh, um, research institute in East Africa, um, which is also here, doing a whole lot of research. And that's where the major testing is going on. That's a state where the lab is certified, able to do the I don't do it, so they're able to do about a thousand tests per day. So if you had this all together, I hope that uh, they'll be able to come together soon. But uh, they've not come out officially to say or to tell us the progress of their work so far. All right, Samson. Let's speak again with Gambo. Gambo Sarki, I think this will be your closing remark on this one. Uh, from your last comment, you, you said that um, it, it looks like the worst is over, if, I don't, if I'm getting you correctly. But I want to know, frankly speaking, do you think that we're really out of the blues in this one? Do you think that this is the real picture? Do you think that we are living in denial? Do you think that we won't hear of some mysterious deaths going forward? Well, you know, we are obviously speaking based on the facts and figures and uh, the indices that we have you know, at our finger tips. You know, remember that people cast years out on the numbers of COVID-19 patients being thrown out in Germany earlier. You should remember that. 
that a lot of people say they want to see those who are actually who have been affected, you know, by this COVID-19, by the coronavirus internal, you know. So now, if people, we had high numbers of, you know, COVID-19 patients internal, where are the ones, you know, we're in lockdown. Now tell me, now when the churches were open, the mosques open, the GMAT prayer grounds open, only for the numbers of COVID-19 patients to start dropping. Then, you know, it only gives, you know, a, a wake-up call to the senses of individuals that how come during lockdown, uh, man, the numbers kept increasing. But now, what you said, uh, gathering places, you know, places of gathering open up, but the numbers started dropping. So what, how do we trust the figures we were having earlier? And, uh, I spoke with an, um, a clinical health expert yesterday. He said that during heat season, when we have this way, we can at the moment. You, know, you have, you know, a lot of things. So it is believed that the numbers that are coming from Kano earlier were not really passed, so to say. You know, that's why the numbers now, the actual figures are what, you know, are what we are experiencing now. That is the belief now. So the belief that the work is over is actually what we are having here in Kano. Mm. You know, we down down here also want to believe that the worst is over in Kano State. Garbo Saki, thank you for talking to us on the show this morning. We appreciate your your insight. Thank you so very much, Gambo. Thank you. All right, let's um, have um, something uh, just give us his closing remark. Uh, Samson Amale, we have to, really have to let you go. Uh, but then, um, let me just ask, uh, when you look at the people in Plata State and Joss, uh, what, what feelers are you getting? Do you see some sense of satisfaction uh, going forward? Do you see any sense of satisfaction, any show of um, satisfaction from the people in Plata State? Yeah, the people are satisfied so far. But um, I, I can tell you for that uh, they want to get back. They want to get their lives back to the use of uh, their normal lives. They want to be able to go to the market. They want to be able to go to the camps. And they are actually tired of having to work them all for almost four days a week and then give them a few days with basically the weekend to do their transactions. So the people here are satisfied with the process so far. Again, they want to have their lives and, um, and that's they are beginning to say. So we're also having cases of palliative and all of that. So we also ask that if you lock us up like this, make sure you give us enough palliatives. Uh, Samson, it's not only Plateau State's residents that want their life back. The whole world want their lives back to the normal. But thank you so much, Samson Omale, a correspondent in Plateau State. Thank you so much for these updates. Thank you very much, Zika and David. You have a second. All right. So we'll take another break. And when we come back, we have more discussions. Please stay with us.